All right. So it's called It's Good News. It's good news. It's the gospel, my friend. Jesus came for you and Jesus came for me. Jesus kept to, came to set the humans free so that you could live eternally. All who are willing to truly love and listen. Good news, right? That the God of the universe made everything inverse to find the laws of physics and science that we know exist. That God came to this world just like you, just like me. No more than that. See, it's so much more. The author opened the book, came into the story, and provided his glory into the pages. He was born a baby, grew and raised to be nothing special but just a carpenter. And then he started his ministry when he finished apprenticing and started to flip the world on his shoulders. He loved radically, breaking the bonds of gravity that keeps your heart beating into place. He performed miracles, healing the sick, making the blind see, getting the handicapped to not walk but rise and run free. He raised the dead to life. Again, he raised the dead to life. And still, we wanted more. So humanity, while desiring a royal king, were instead given an average, everyday being. And they were not thrilled, you could say, for he was here to be a king in a brand new way. Not just to rule and just to conquer, to belittle and to drive you bonkers, but to serve you, to be there for you, to breathe, to laugh, to cry, to give everything for you, to take every ounce of hardship on your spirit from you. And up there on that cross, he paid the ultimate price. And up there on that cross, he laid down his life letting us and our death and our sin not get what it wants because he stood in place of it. For you, for me, to forgive so that you can have another chance to live into his glory. And then when he rose, that's where death ceased to roam free. Don't you see? Jesus did not die for you to just do what you want. Jesus did not die for you to go back to how you were. He died to save you from it. And you, you're supposed to celebrate it with your life, to share it, to live it by loving, accepting, embracing, worshiping him in your life and service for who he is, not who I am, not who you are. So then why do you cloud it all out? I mean, I'm glad you like it here within these walls. And I'm happy it brings you back, but what happens when it doesn't? When the songs don't match the style you long for. Or when the sermons are uncomfortable. Or, when, or everything isn't what you expected or wanted as you sit in your seat just so you can decide if you'll applaud it. That isn't the gospel of which we were speaking before. For here in the church, so often in our development, we've watered down things just to become more relevant. We change the message to make people happy and change the music to get them clapping. When the gospel, ex again, so much more to be rattling the very core of our existence. For the gospel is the way we live, the way we celebrate the life we give out of love for our Savior who lived to set you free. Not so you can, pl can complain about churchiosity. Since those who wanted things to be the way that they could only see were the same humans who sent Jesus to the cross so openly. For church in itself is you and me. The church in itself is to serve humbly, like Jesus did, like God did, and to live that in every breath we give as we move on into new ones. Now, I'm aware that might seem unrealistic, but as Christians, we're supposed to be something totally different. Being apart from the culture we live in and the one we see, to live in a way that differs noticeably. At least trying to live a life that resembles Christ. At least trying to love others, representing his life. To give to those who are forgotten or oppressed. To go to those who have no money or nice clothes to be dressed in. To go to places and do what we're most afraid of. To serve those we want to stay away from most. To love and give and serve justly at all costs. Because of how good he is. To celebrate 
how good he is. And if you only look forward to God within these walls, then perhaps God is someone you know not a bit or at all. Because the more you get comfier there in your seat, the more you lose sight of the one who set you free. So the next time you think about living like all the others, the next time you complain of your church and you wonder, ask, did Jesus die for this? Did Jesus die for this? Did Jesus die for my own music preference? Did he die so I can just enjoy a lesson? Did he die so I can feel oh so pleasant as I continue on in my life to do what I feel is best then? Oh, but no. I have good news. It's the gospel, my friend. Jesus came for you, and Jesus came for me. Jesus came to set all the humans free so that we could live eternally, all who are willing to truly love and listen.